Well, hello then, I do hope you're all well. Well, today, in, uh, this is a really, really interesting question, because uh, this, it's Stuart C. MacDonald, and uh, if I remember rightly for the S, S, S&P, and he asked for a, if you can ask a very important question about this Rwanda re- refugee scheme. And uh, let's just say he has a lot to say. And uh, I'll leave it for this impressive and Peter to finish what he has to say. Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. To ask the Home Secretary whether she will make a statement on the planned removal of asylum seekers to Rwanda. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our world leading migration and economic development partnership with Rwanda is a global first and will change the way we collectively tackle illegal immigration. This is a global problem that requires international solutions. Rwanda is a fundamentally safe and secure country with a track record of supporting asylum seekers. Individuals will be relocated to Rwanda and have their asylum claims processed by the Rwandan authorities. The partnership is an important part of our reform of the broken asylum and migration system. I welcome the High Court's decision on Friday on this. However, with legal proceedings ongoing, It would be inappropriate to comment further than to say we comply fully with our legal and international obligations. We aim to move forward with a policy that offers new opportunities for those relocated to Rwanda and enables us to focus our support on those most in need of our help. The British public rightly expect us to act. Indeed, inaction is not a responsible option when people are drowning and ruthless criminals are profiting from human misery. Decisive leadership is required to tackle the smuggling of people through illicit and criminal means. This evil trade must be stopped. The principle of the plan is simple. People will no longer be able to pay evil people smugglers to go to a destination of their choice while passing through safe, sometimes several safe countries. If you come from a safe We all know that to be false, and I just wish they'd stop peddling that myth. ...country, you were picking the UK as a preferred destination. Uncontrolled immigration reduces our capacity to help those who most need our support. It puts intolerable pressure on public services and local communities. No, it doesn't. It's 12 years of Tory austerity that puts pressure on uh, public services, you tit. Long-lasting change will not happen overnight it requires a long-term plan. As I've said many times before in this House, there is no one single solution, but this Government will deliver the first comprehensive overhaul of the asylum system in decades. Thank you Mr Speaker and my sincere thank you to you for granting this urgent question. Mr Speaker, this is not world-leading policy. If anything, this is leading us to the total shredding of the Refugee Convention. This cash for deportations policy is akin to state-sponsored trafficking and transportation. What is more, it is a grim political stunt being rushed out again to shore up the Prime Minister. Why else has this flight been organised before the relevant provisions of the Horrible Borders Bill were even brought into force? What is the Minister's explanation for that? More fundamentally, why are ministers pressing ahead when even the most basic safeguards are not in place? Mr Speaker, I fear age assessment processes are totally inadequate and will see children sent to Rwanda. As I understand it, such a difficult process has been crammed into a 30-minute interview with two immigration officers, with young people left unaware of their rights to challenge decisions that they are adults in. I'd like to know from the minister if that is accurate. And how on earth can especially vulnerable people such as trafficking victims, torture survivors, LGBT people be identified by a basic screening interview? Another process that the Minister knows takes a long time. Indeed, why is it permissible at all for trafficking survivors to be part of the inadmissibility procedures? Mr Speaker, access to legal advice is crucial. So let me ask, can you confirm how many of those scheduled to be on the flight tomorrow have not yet been able to seek legal advice? There is no functioning joint committee or monitoring committee yet. How can it possibly be right to proceed when these basic oversight bodies are not yet established? And he knows that the overwhelming balance of legal opinion, including that of UNHCR, is that this policy is totally illegal. Now, surely if the government had any final shred of respect for the rule of law, 
it would at least wait until a final ruling in July before commencing this policy. Mr Speaker, this is a policy that will not work on its own awful terms. Will he confirm that the Rwandan asylum system only has capacity for a couple of hundred new cases each year? And has he been made aware of evidence that even now uh, more risky routes are already being tried by smugglers as a result? Mr Speaker, in conclusion, this will not hurt horrendous people smugglers one jot, but it will badly hurt those who have fled persecution and sought protection here. And this policy brings shame on the UK internationally. You know, no doubt it will that Tom Perslove and the to extreme Brexit Tory government all clutch the pearls. I'd love it if you'd have mentioned the Section 16 of this uh, <laughs> Rwanda uh, refugee scheme. Oh, I'd have been, that'd have been interesting to hear what they have to say about that. Well, thank you, Mr Speaker, and I'm grateful to the um, SNP spokesman for his questions. Um, and, of course, what is fair to say is that we will have to agree to differ on this. We've had many debates over the course of the last few months about this issue, and what I will do is comment on the broad issues um, that he has raised, of course, reflecting the fact that there are these ongoing judicial proceedings. Um, but firstly, I just want to say that I thought that his use of language um, at the beginning yeah. of his remarks yeah. were not the sort of remarks that I expect from him. He is normally temperate in his use of language. And I think to compare um, this new partnership with human trafficking is frankly plain wrong. Very, very offensive, not just to this government, but also, I would argue, hugely offensive to the Rwandans too. Um, um, Bill, what's section 16? about it then sounds like uh, human trafficking to me he knows full well that because i've said so repeatedly that unaccompanied asylum seeking children will not be transferred as part of this partnership there will be a thorough screening process in place and that is ongoing and of course cases are looked at on a case-by-case -case basis taking says that often, well, if they're done by case-by-case -case -case basis, then why don't you just process them here, save all that money and time and effort? In ...proper account of all of the relevant circumstances in them. And on the point about access to legal advice, people are able to access legal advice in detention in the usual way. I think it also probably hasn't escaped his notice and the House's notice that, of course, the UNHCR place asylum seekers um, in Rwanda, which I think perhaps speaks volumes about their judgment. Well, hang on, the, the Shadow Home Secretary likes to chunter from a sedentary position. I'd like to ask you, Tom, how many of these people did they repatriate <laughs> from... Uh, from these countries, because I'm sure that they did. She shall have her opportunity in a moment. But the truth is that the UNHCR clearly, through their actions in placing people in Rwanda, believe um, that it is safe for people to be placed there. We, of course, have been through our own thorough processes to make judgments through our country information notices. Have we noticed the. Uh... Yeah, they're doing that bit now. Uh, that, that's the, the new bit that they're doing now. So I thought, I thought, oh, Tom, you look so masculine when you do that. Oh, getting me all a quiver. And that is the right and proper way of handling this. Um, and of course, as I've said again many times before, but it bears repeating, we will always live up to our international obligations and the laws that we're supposedly subject to. Now, I have to laugh with the... the, the Pearl clutch, he was just unbelievable. Just, well, he didn't really say anything that weren't true, and uh, some of the statements he was saying was quite shocking. And with this extreme Brexit Tory government, not entirely surprised, surprising either. And let's just say there's a couple of videos of this where you get a one MP, Tory MP who, who goes on the warpath criticising Stuart Mac MacDonald here and uh, Yvette Cooper for their defamatory language and then goes on the warpath using defamatory language to attack a lefty lawyers. And then another one who clearly shows you how thick and stupid... Well, I'm not sure whether he's been thick or stupid or whether he knows exactly what he's doing. Where he doesn't know the difference between refugees and economic migrants. And they, they're they just absolutely bona fide, absolute bell taps. <laughs> right, I shall leave the video here. Until the next time, I shall bid you farewell and take care.